Lord Jesus Christ, we ask you for the grace to go deep with you, especially in prayer, in knowing you and in loving you and being able to encounter you anywhere we are in our minds and our hearts. Give us a desire for that, Lord, to know you more and the grace to accomplish it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so welcome to session six of the Living the Faith series. Um, this is Prayer to Praying with uh, the Mind. So, as always, little recap. We have talked about a lot of stuff um, thus far at this point. We talked about the general overview of what we're doing, that the, the goal of human life is to know and love and, and serve God, and we're designed for him. We're only completed in him, and becoming a saint is just becoming who we really are, and it's becoming um, completed in him, and we do that by actually living our faith, not just thinking about it or even memorizing it or talking about it, but it's a lived reality. It's designed to be a lived reality. Hence, this series, how do you actually live it? What are the concrete parts? And hopefully at the end, we'll get a plan. In this session, what we're going to talk about is prayer. So we're going to talk about mental prayer. Now, St. Paul reminds uh, the church at, at Thessalonica to uh, pray without ceasing. That's his admonition to them. Obviously, that's not possible in sacramental prayer, right? Because you can't um, always be in mass. You can't always be in confession. Your wedding doesn't last for years. Eventually, the anointing stops. You know, like what he's talking about is mental prayer. So what is it? What is mental prayer? You know me. I love to turn to the saints. The people who became who they actually are. St. Teresa of Avila uh, summed it up best, I think. She said, Mental prayer is a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God. It's a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with God. And a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with somebody is deep. You know, it goes beyond bumping into somebody and, oh, Pilates was killer last Thursday, wasn't it? You know, kind of a thing. Like these very, like, basic kind of schmaltzy things that, that we can talk about a lot of the time without going to a deeper level. It's deep. Or St. Teresa of Calcutta, she talked about Eucharistic adoration, and she said, you know, um, I look at him, and he looks at me. That was her conception of it. It was a heart-to-heart. -heart. <clears throat> the bottom line is that to engage mental prayer um, is the same thing as saying, you know what? I'm going to actually try to know the God of the universe personally and intimately. I'm actually going to try. I'm going to make an effort. Us Catholics, we're great at rote prayer. We can kind of rattle off the prayers and whatnot. And those prayers are fantastic. I pray them every single day. They're great in and of themselves. But if there's no engagement of the heart, they're not really um, having the effect that they're supposed to. Maybe they're not even doing anything for us. So my first recommendation, my first challenge to us all is to make the interior decision to get serious about doing whatever is necessary to know God the way that he wants to be known. He wants to be known in an intimate, deep, personal level. And, and in order for us to get there, we have to make the decision to go in that direction personally, interiorly. So how do you pray in this mental fashion then, this sort of extemporaneous fashion? Once you make that choice, just like you uh, have made the other choices in this series, you know, to get rid of sin in your life or seek interior healing or reject anything that's evil or whatever it might be, then it begs the question, you know, like, okay, what do I actually do in this heart to heart that I'm having with God? Many years ago, I got to know a gal through church. And I thought um, things were going well and our friendship was blossoming over bowls of kava at weird Portland restaurants and whatnot. There are a lot of heart-to-heart -heart convos in there. And you know when you're having a heart-to-heart -heart convo, right? You're, you're below the Pilates level. And at the end of one of those encounters, I went in for the hug, as I normally would, and I was met with the worst possible conceivable thing. Not a drink in my face 
a handshake, cold as ice. God will never do that to us. We go in for the hug, he doubles down, he nestles in and he pays for dinner. Like that's just how he is, that's just how he operates. So in having that heart to heart with him, we never have to worry about him not showing up. It's always on our end if something's going wrong. So if we're having that heart to heart with him, the core of what we want to bring there initially is honesty, honesty. Now, this is a tough one, even for people who say, Father, I'm not, a, I don't lie. I'm not a dishonest person. What that? This is kind of a deeper kind of honesty. So however you pray, you know, pray with total honesty. Mental prayer um, is a prayer without pretense, you could say. You're sitting and you're communicating directly um, with he who is all in all. He is sustaining the greatest supernova in the universe and this can of sugar-free root beer, okay? He's just doing it all at the same time and it, it's not hard for him. So we don't bring pretense to him. You wanna sit with him and bring your real self, not the fake self to that meeting. We all have a fake self, but in this type of meeting, we don't have to, we don't have to put that mask on. It's just not necessary. Best thing you could do is just come as you are. Wounds and all, sins and all, everything. Just come as you are. He already knows where you're at and he's the only one in the universe that can actually handle it, right? He's the only one that given everything, no matter what it was, no matter how grave it was in someone's life, could absolutely handle it, would never ever reject them. If we wanna meet him really and truly, no fakeness, no mask. We can't hide from him in any kind of way. If we hide from him, there's nobody else to go to. So honesty is a not hiding. That's hard for, for some of us. That's hard for a lot of us. So if you feel that difficulty, make that part of the prayer. Lord, I need your help. I need your help. This is really hard for me. I'm not used to putting it all out there. Um, help me to trust you. Help me to trust you. He loves prayers like that, all right? So after we make the choice to get to know him in general, and the choice to be totally honest with him while we're trying to get to know him, then we have to know what to actually do. You know, what are the walnuts and almonds? What are the nuts and bolts that actually go into this kind of, of prayer? Like I said, a lot of methods. There's a ton of methods of mental prayer, mental prayer. I mean, a lot of them. Um, but there's some kind of gold standard methods, and those are the ones I want to go over in this session. The saints generally agree that there are three parts to mental prayer. The preparation, you're getting prepped, the meditation, and the conclusion. So we're going to lean heavily on St. Alphonsus Liguori and... Uh, St. Francis de Sales, as I usually do, to help us kind of nail some of these down. The first part is the preparation. This is the stage where you've just sat down. You've arrived at a Holiday Inn Express in Central Point, Oregon. There's snow in the forecast. Your future is uncertain. And you've said, okay, I am going to pray to God now. You've made that decision. Phone is on silent and face down. And what has to happen for that to happen is our mind and our heart actually have to turn toward God. I think of it as a physical turning, even though it's metaphysical. Our attention, our affection, our whole being moves via some kind of act of will in the direction of being itself. Not too hard because he's everywhere, right? Being itself is the nature of reality itself. That movement, that turning itself has three parts that uh, St. Alphonsus Liguori recommends. To make an act of faith, uh, an act of humility, and then a prayer for enlightenment. So a faith is just saying, act of faith is just saying, God, I believe you are who you say you are. I believe you are who you say you are, and I believe you're here right now. 
And I can't even find the words to say thank you adequately for everything you've done for me. I love you. It's that, it's that moment of, of, of recognizing it and saying, I believe you and I love you and I'm thankful you're here. Okay, we're turning. And then an act of humility is saying, Lord, I'm a sinner. I do bad things. You know, I, I don't have a solution for evil in my life. You're the solution. You're the solution. I deserve hell when it all comes down to it. But I believe that if I follow you, you'll save me. And I'll be with you forever. You're the solution to the evil in my life. Okay, so it's acknowledging him and then it's acknowledging where we're at too. No matter how much we're killing it with our daily rosary, we still got to admit that we're sinners. And then thirdly, a prayer for enlightenment. This is just your heart saying, um, I don't have the light. I'm not the light. You're the light. You're the way. You're the truth. Shine supernaturally into my mind and my heart right now so that I can get something out of this prayer time. So I can know you and what you want from me. Very simple. You're praying for enlightenment to actually know something. And then St. Alphonsus says, end it with a Hail Mary. And with a, a, a glory be to the Father, to St. Joseph, pray to your garden angel, pray to your patron saint, boom, 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 boom. All of that should happen pretty quickly. You should be able to um, do it in a sense that it flows very smoothly and effortlessly. That's the first part. That's the preparation. That's just getting, getting in the right space, okay? Then the second part is the meditation. This is the meat and potatoes of mental prayer. You're using your mind. You're using your heart and you're using this, this thinking, rational, intellectual part of your soul to go spiritually deep with some kind of truth and some kind of reality. And so what we do in the meditation and the meat and potatoes, we have to identify what kind of meat and what kind of potatoes. You know, chicken and a russet is different than beef and a Yukon gold. Okay, so, so we have to determine like what exactly we're going to there's a few things we can point toward. There's a few kinds of meat and The objects of med meditation are primarily um, the scriptures, sacred scriptures, writing of a saint, or some kind of spiritual truth. Meditating on the scriptures, that is um, a sponge that never runs dry. It's a towel that you can't wring fully. Two sessions from now, we're going to go deep with that and talk about Lexio Divina, like how to actually pray with the scriptures and suck the eternal truth out of them while you're with them. We'll talk about that more, but for now, the sacred scriptures, meditating on a scripture, perfectly acceptable. The writings of a saint, you know me, I love introductions to the devout life, but there's interior castle, there's story of a soul, there's um, all kinds of spiritual classics out there, just little bits from a saint that shows you how to become a saint, how to actually go in that way. Or there's the more free-flowing, version and that's a spiritual truth could be the reality of the incarnation uh, the reality of, of the salvation that we have through the cross uh, the reality that um, by participating in the sacraments we get divine life you know the reality that there's evil there's actual evil in the world whatever it might be like there's some sort of spiritual truth and we're bringing that to our lord and we're narrowing it down to just a part. So don't try to consume massive amounts of material. That's not what this is. We're going to talk about that more in session in eight in a couple of months. So don't worry about it too much right now. But what you want to know right now is just, you're just taking a scripture. You're just taking a passage from the writing of the saint. You're just taking a spiritual truth and you're chewing on it. So that object of meditation, whatever it is, should do one thing as you're meditating on it. It should lead to um, loving and intimate communication. Loving and intimate communication. Just speak to our Lord. You know, ask him for clarity. Um, tell him how much you love him. Uh, ask him to, to heal you of your sin. Tell him that you really believe in him. Thank him for everything he's done for you. Lift up the people in your life that, that need him. Make resolutions around the enlightenment that you've received, 
begin to intimately converse with him. And at the beginning, it may seem stilted, that's fine. Continue to press through, and I promise you there's a grace of the Holy Spirit there that you're not expecting, where at some point it clicks in. He increases and we decrease and things become clear, okay? That's the second part, the meditation. The third part is the conclusion. So if everything's, you know, going like clockwork and the gears are greased and whatnot, I sit down to pray. I turn my heart toward our Lord. I ask for enlightenment and I get it, right? And he shows me that I'm impatient in a particular area because somebody I knew deep in my childhood was impatient in that way. That's the time to say, thank you for the clarity. Thank you for the clarity. I resolve in this moment to be different. I promise to be different by, by your grace. Help me with your grace to be different. So we're thanking him for the encounter. We're resolving to go in a different direction that he's revealed. And we're asking for the spiritual strength to actually do it. See, the ball is being moved forward. You can actually see the progress. Father John uh, Bartonek has a great way of summing it up. He, he calls it uh, concrete, consider, converse, and commit. Or concentrate, consider, uh, converse, and commit. So we're concentrating on the presence of God, you know, in our, in our lives, in our hotel rooms, wherever we might be. We're considering the scripture or the reading or the truth or whatever that we're meditating on. And we're conversing with him about it. We're, we're entering this, this spiritual dialogue about it. And we're looking especially for any insight that he's giving us into that thing. And then we're making a commitment in alignment with the insight. We're, we're making a commitment to make actual measurable spiritual progress in that area. And by doing that, we're integrating all the different types of prayer, blessing, petition, intercession, thanksgiving, whatever it might be, it's there. The point is, what it boils down to is, we should be forming a methodology of mental, mental prayer for ourselves. So that means if we need to go back and listen to this talk and take some more notes, that's great. Looking up good solid Catholic info on mental prayer, that's great, but we want a little script to follow for a while until we get used to it. I follow St. Francis de Sales' morning prayer, which I've written into a short little thing. And if you want that, you can email me and I'll email it to you. But it's my interpretation of his version of morning prayer, which is pages when he writes it, but I get it down to just this little thing. And I go through those points in my day, especially in the morning, you know, thanking God for my life, realizing that my entire life is oriented towards salvation. That's the purpose of my life. Orienting myself toward goodness, wanting to do goodness, but recognizing what's going to be evil there, what's going to be temptation and try to get me off track and admitting to him that I can't do the good and I can't resist the evil without his assistance. It's just totally impossible. So it's making an act of submission there. And then it's asking the Blessed Virgin and all the saints, um, to pray for you. It's a plan. It's an orientation. It's going through these basic realities of I'm prepping, I'm turning toward, I'm meditating, and I'm concluding, I'm resolving in some sort of way. If you haven't checked out the prayer process by Dynamic Catholic, um, give it a little look-see. It's pretty good um, in terms of just getting going with mental prayer. And it's the result of a lot of research and a lot of writings of uh, the saints. Real fast, the steps are uh, gratitude. You, you just, you thank God for anything, for your very life. Awareness, you're revisiting the times in the past 24 hours when you weren't, you know, your, your true self. And you're talking to God about that. Um, significant moments, anything that the Holy Spirit revealed to you through the day, something you experienced, maybe through a person or event, God trying to get to you, trying to, trying to communicate with you, um, asking God for peace for any sins that you've committed. If you need to go to confession, going to confession, uh, freedom, speaking with God about, you know, how he's inviting you to change your life after that 
repentance has occurred, and then lifting up other people to him in intercession, praying for them and finishing with an Our Father. I would conflate some of those steps myself, as we have, and as St. Alphonsus and St. Francis de Sales have, but it's a real good place to um, start. So the prayer process by a dynamic Catholic. If you engage these things, I recommend every day for 15 minutes in the morning, every day, 15 minutes in the morning at least, we're going to start to notice some effects. There's going to be more interior peace. There's going to be more mental clarity. Uh, that you're going to notice more hope, more joy, like authentic joy that surpasses happiness. Um, and basically more of everything that you need to become who you really are, become the saint version. Remember, the saint version is just you. It's the real you, minus evil and minus brokenness. That's a pretty good deal. Um, it's something that in our spiritual life, we have to get to the point where we can pray mentally anytime, anywhere, pretty quickly. Anytime, anywhere, pretty quickly. In church, in your bedroom, in a hotel room in Central Point, at the Grand Canyon, anytime, anywhere, pretty quickly. Because one of the keys to sainthood is to pray without ceasing to all day be in loving dialogue with God about something. Now, we'll enter a time of Q&A if anybody is um, interested. Uh, any tips on a good location to use for praying at home? Yeah, I recommend that you, you make your home as churchy looking as possible, you know, like statues of the saints and icons and all kinds of beautiful things. And I would recommend selecting one spot that um, is, you know, even relatively comfortable. It is okay. Um, I had a Poang chair where I prayed for a long time. And so if you've got a chair in a corner next to a plant, next to a window where you can have your coffee with Jesus for 15 minutes and, and really engage him deep in the heart and mental prayer, that's great. My recommendation is just that it's the same spot, that it's the same time and it's the same spot. So you're just building a habit into your life. Kind of like most of us generally eat at the same time. We generally shower at the same time. You know, we want to kind of at least have one section of prayer a day where we generally pray in that, that section. Do you have any thoughts on Catholics using more Eastern practices of prayer, such as a prayer rope? Yeah, so there was an effort in the church post the 1960s to integrate um, Eastern meditation and various forms of um, Eastern prayer this was spearheaded probably primarily by Thomas Merton, um, but has been taken on in modern times, even by Buddhists like Thich Nhat Hanh and, and whatnot. And um, after thinking about it many years, after writing a philosophy thesis on Zen, I have concluded that it's not a helpful idea at best, and uh, it's a harmful idea at worst. Simply because those systems developed purely from uh, the ruminations of humans. And so our system, if you want to call it that, is derived directly from the mind of God. It is revelatio. It's God explaining to us how to actually interact with him and move and live and be in the universe. The church says of herself, via the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that she's the fullness of truth. And so if you have the fullness of truth, it sort of begs the question, why go to like a half truth or a quarter truth? Right? There's kind of like a, ooh, there's a little bit of a, you know, a, an attraction to like Eastern things and whatnot. But I think that's 
totally unnecessary uh, based on the richness that we have um, in the church. Prayer rope, rosary is superior. So I can give a whole talk on that sometime if, if we like, because it's a big topic. But for now, I'd say we got, we got enough going on to get you and your whole village to, to heaven. Do you know of any great Catholic podcasts, such as Word on Fire, to start the day with? Yeah, Word on Fire is a, a, a good podcast. I myself uh, am a little old school. And so my one concrete recommendation I would make is um, to go back and listen to old recordings of Archbishop Fulton Sheen. You know, Archbishop Fulton Sheen is a Catholic bishop that um, had the number one show on television for years. He was number one on NBC in the number one time slot. Do you imagine that? I've mentioned it before because it just blows my mind. A Catholic bishop just talking about Catholicism, that being the number one show on television. Our society has become much different uh, since then. And that wasn't that long ago. So, but he was great, humorous, quick-witted, very, very smart, super intelligent. And it's really easy to get his talks. There's even apps that are just his talks and whatnot that you can access. So I would check him out into if you want to listen to something on Catholicism, because he's very topical, and he will handle uh, topics very well. Do you have a resource for praying with the Psalms? I'm curious if there is an index of sorts that lists which Psalms address certain things slash feelings we might be dealing with in life um, that we would bring to prayer. That's a fantastic idea. A, I don't know if that does exist. B, if it doesn't, you should totally do it. It'll take years, uh, probably, but what a worthy project. My resource for praying with the Psalms is the Liturgy of the Hours. You know, so if you're not familiar with the Liturgy of the Hours, I always recommend even to lay people to become somewhat familiar with, with the Liturgy of the Hours. It's an extension of the Mass out into the day, all the way from early morning until um, late night. After I get off here, I'm going to um, pray night prayer, which is the fifth liturgy of the hour of the day. And it is primarily a meditation on the Psalms. It's a direct evolution of the Hebraic prayer, the Judaic prayer that was going on in the temple before it was destroyed. So like in the book of Acts, when it says they went up to the temple to pray and whatnot, that's what they were doing. They're praying the Psalms. And so our Liturgy of the Hours is well, kind of one of those unbroken continuity things from, from Judaism. So I highly recommend even just praying one of them. Uh, what are your thoughts on writing in a journal during prayer? Big fan. I'm a big fan of this concept. If you've got a poor memory, especially, um, it helps to write things down. I think even if you have a real crack up memory, the action of writing is very, very fruitful. And there's a type of mental prayer that we did not discuss, discuss today because it's a little more advanced called dialogical writing. And dialogical writing is basically you're writing to God, but then you kind of ask for the grace of the Holy Spirit and surmise what he might say back to you and go back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And the goal is that hopefully at some point you are purified out of the equation and you're actually getting some communication from the Holy Spirit on these matters. Journaling is also a great way to keep track of all of like, what are my wounds? How are they functioning? Are they healed? What do I need to still work on? What are, where are the entry points to evil in my life that still need to be um, closed off? What type of prayer am I doing? Why am I doing it? When am I doing it? Who am I doing it for? It's part of the PSP, gaining, gaining the, the personalized spiritual plan. You're getting kind of a, an ontological map, a spiritual map of what's going on inside of you and the plan toward sainthood. You know, we, we can't do anything without a plan. Becoming a saint's the hardest thing we'll ever do. It's not hard, it's impossible, and we need a plan. Any tips on identifying when or how God is 
answering you in mental prayer. Yeah, the act of humility is so important in, in the mental prayer because we don't want to get into a situation where we're kind of answering ourselves, even in that very overt dialogical kind of prayer and, and, and writing and whatnot. You know God is answering. You know you're communicating with God when you have peace. God communicates in peace. Not surface level happiness, not the, not the holly jollies. I mean, to the core of your being, you know you are where you are supposed to be doing what you're supposed to do in that moment kind of peace. It's an incredible reality. So if you're going to prayer and you are peaceful and you're engaging this process and you're meditating and you're gaining insight, the insight is God communicating. Remember that linguistics is a very low form of communication. We tend, we tend to think of it in a high form. And from the perspective of evolutionary psychology, it is very developed. But in terms of the universe, it's a low level of communication because the universe involves ontology, metaphysics. So if you're God and you have no limitations and you can just immediately transfer an entire paradigm into someone's mind, that's a higher form of communication. And he does things like that. So he will transfer ideas, transfer images, transfer feelings, transfer notions, transfer paradigms, and they'll be there and they'll be accompanied by a supernatural peace. And over time, we're able to discern better what is him, what is us, what is the world, what is the devil. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you uh, next month for session seven, which is Marian Devotion. Very, very excited about that. I got tons of fun stories uh, about Our Lady. So, may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.